fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and translation. Talent alone is not enough to become a good writer. A writer needs, in addition to talent, ferocious concentration and courageous curiosity. Defiance. I think you have to be able to sort of relinquish everything so that the writing can happen. I think with risk comes the most ambitious projects, the most life-changing. Columbia's writing program is singular in that it has a 60 credit requirement in the two years of study instead of what is often the usual 30 or 35 credits. So with the 60 credit hours, it really allows for both deep study in the area of expertise, but also the opportunity to really branch out to supplement that knowledge and make the work all the more rich. I lived in London for five years. In London, the feeling is that the best MFA programs at the moment are on the East Coast in the US, and that Columbia is the pinnacle of that. The instructors in this program are amazing writers, but they're also caring teachers. Really committed to the work of the students. We have probably the most illustrious faculty in the country. We have a Nobel Prize winner. We have several Pulitzer Prize winners. We have MacArthur Geniuses. We have many Guggenheim winners, National Book Award winners, National Book Critic Circle Award winners. That's very exciting for the students. I think it gives the students something to aspire to. It gives the students an example of somebody who has devoted their life to the work that the students themselves are setting out upon. I remember first starting here and how intimidating it was to have a Pulitzer Prize winning author as your first writing professor, but they make it feel normal. They make it feel like there's no barrier between students and professors, and that's an empowering feeling. Look at who you can work with here. You're in the presence of writers who are really actively engaged at a very high cultural level in the same artistic struggles that you are. One of the great, great pleasures for me of teaching is getting to be with students in that moment of the first time's byline or like picking up a newspaper and their name is there. It's the best. I feel like I'm showing up for something that is calling on all of my heart, all of my mind, all of my soul. I know when I enter a classroom that I'm going to be tested and challenged in ways that I really rely on, and I'm also going to see the future of literature in this classroom. That's what keeps you coming back into the classroom. Seeing people find it, seeing people after months and months of hitting the wall break through, and they start to sing. Our feeling is that a writer doesn't become a good writer simply by writing. You also become a good writer by studying the writing of great writers that came before. The point is, can we give you tools that you can use in a week, in a year, in 10 years to produce the kind of writing that will really speak to others? We're constantly working on our craft. We're studying technique. You know, we are juggling our workshops on top of all of these craft lessons. The best moments happen in the writing workshop itself. It's revelatory. It only happened in a, a writing workshop like the ones at Columbia, which are unique in the fact that there is so much empathy and consideration and time put into them. It gives the students this craft cocoon. They get to form more of a community. And writers, we work in solitude, but we need communities, we need peers. You have to feel safe in order to grow creatively, and I think that our students feel that way. I want to make sure that the soil that our poets are growing in is tilled just enough that they can really send their roots down deep, so that when winds of change come, they're not going to blow them down. But I would cry rivers until I became a drought. Then the remains of me would scatter. At workshop, when someone does a close read of my poetry, then they can say, you know, I feel like you're holding back in this area. And it seems like your poem wants to say more. Learning to listen to a poem as its own entity and learning to put that poem on the page according to what it wants. When students come from diverse backgrounds, everyone has a different idea about what makes great literature and they have a different trove of resources that they're drawing from. And so that really diversifies the conversations. 
the diversity, multiplicity of nations, races, genders, etc. It means we don't have to use words like tradition, legacy, conversation in the singular. That's exciting. One of the great things about being here is that because we hear so many different voices, there's just a constant flow of ideas. And ongoing conversations with young writers, emerging writers all over the world. The goal of teaching translation here isn't to turn everybody into a translator, but to allow writers to explore different modes of writing. Katrin Jensen came into translation as a fiction writer, but wound up translating a lot of poetry. This is a book that she submitted part of as her thesis. It's called Third Millennium Heart, and it was a finalist for the Best Translated Book Award and just won the National Translation Award. The way it generally works is you finish your coursework after two years. You can during the summer after your fourth semester, finish your thesis then. But you can also take an extra year, which is called a research arts year, and that gives you time to really work on the thesis. So this is the book that came out of my graduate thesis. I came to Columbia to study nonfiction. I wanted to write a book and I wrote air traffic and in the process during the three years that I was here I coincidentally also won the Pulitzer Prize in poetry. There are many books that I first read when they were in the form of a thesis. I mean every agent I've ever spoken to said you know if someone from Columbia sends me their thesis I'm gonna read it. Columbia Artist Teachers was founded to provide free arts education to underserved communities and to provide pedagogical training for our MFA instructors, many of whom would like to pursue teaching opportunities once they've left the program. And so working with CAT, I then had an opportunity to expand the program. And that program is about bringing creative writing workshops into different communities throughout New York City. I've always been really committed to folks that do not have a lot of access to capture the intangible, to give voice to the thing that most people don't hear. So here, you get to be an artist, you get to ask questions, you get to take chances. And then you step outside and you get to talk to publishers. We do have panels with editors. We have a mixer where graduates of the program meet agents on an evening together on campus. We're in New York City. Obviously, it's the publishing capital. But we also want to put a little bit of a break on it sometimes and give students the space and the time to develop themselves and not just fling themselves headfirst into the melee, but create enough of a safe environment for them to really work on their craft so that when they emerge from this place, they really are ready to be in that world. I would say that it's not just writing that changes here. It's you as a person who's going to change. So if you're coming here, be ready for that and relearn how to be an artist. It's really an incredibly generous, sincere place to become a writer and a human being.